Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The Postmaster General is sounding the alarm on holiday shipping. Record demand combined with the COVID vaccine and this massive snowstorm headed through the Northeast are all fueling major delays. What you need to know. And speaking of the vaccine, the FDA is ready to clear the path for Moderna's Corona vaccine. And that is in a matter of days. This as healthcare workers are expected to be vaccinated with Pfizer shot today. But first, how about the weather? Take a look at the radar, tracking some snow that is moving across the Metro Detroit area right now. And the snow does top our news this noon as we take a look at brand new video of the snowflakes flying. This is in Northville near I-75, but if you're at home, you probably see a little bit of the action out of your own window. Brandon joins us with a look at if we're going to be seeing any accumulating snow. I know kids at home might want to get out and play in it. Yes, they are brand new flakes by Brandon Rue. And if you look outside your window in Ann Arbor, this is what you will see. Uh, rough go, but the big house is back there somewhere. It is a little heavier in some spots with the snow. 30 degrees at Metro. It's 28 there in Ann Arbor. Notice those winds east, northeast, 5 to 15. So our upper 20s and low 30s still feel like teens and low 20s and that's what you want to dress for snow at times will be a little heavier than others and uh, we're looking at some accumulation we'll call it a nuisance snow as temps get into those low 30s the wind keeps the feels like conditions down but not a real impressive storm it is going to be elsewhere around the country and we'll take a closer look at that coming up but in general or averaging things out looks like maybe an inch or two of snow around the area. So we're talking about maybe a half an inch to two inches with a few areas getting maybe just a little bit more than that. This is one of several models we're looking at for snow totals today. And Rhonda, we're looking at weekend storm, rain or snow. I'll have more on that as well coming up. All right, Brandon, thank you. Meanwhile, we want to turn our attention to the very latest with the coronavirus vaccine. More vaccinations are happening today for frontline workers all across the country, and we could be just days away from that second vaccine from Moderna. Already, thousands of healthcare workers have gotten their first dose, and remember, you have to have two doses, so that second dose will be coming a few weeks later. Meantime, as Tom Costello reports, we could see another company getting clearance for emergency use. As frontline medical workers receive doses of the Pfizer vaccine, we could see a second option to help prevent COVID within days. Tomorrow, the FDA's outside advisory panel, VerbPAC, will formally review Moderna's vaccine candidate. Next week, assuming the authorization by the FDA of the Moderna vaccine, we would expect to ship 5.9 million doses of Moderna vaccine from this very facility. An FDA review found Moderna's vaccine to be more than 94% effective and that it may also prevent the spread of the virus, suggesting asymptomatic infection could be reduced by 63% after a single shot. Health experts hope additional data in the next few weeks will confirm even higher levels of protection. Which really would help us then not only uh, uh, protect against uh, this disease, but also potentially eliminate virus circulation from the population. Moderna's vaccine uses the same messenger RNA technology as Pfizer's and requires two doses. But it does not need the same sub-zero temperatures, making it easier to store. For now, it's Pfizer's vaccine reaching the arms of essential health workers nationwide. Arriving Wednesday at the largest hospital network in the nation's capital and more than 4,000 miles away in Anchorage, Alaska. And as UPS and FedEx track deliveries, both companies tell NBC News they have teams of meteorologists monitoring winter weather conditions around the clock with contingency plans in place in case there are potential delays. Meanwhile, among those who've already gotten their first dose, Angela Mattingly, a housekeeper for the University of Iowa Healthcare. So far, says Angela, no side effects. You feel safer. I do. I feel 100% safer. I can't yeah. wait to get the second dose. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, drive-through vaccines for healthcare workers. I feel like a pioneer. <laughs> 
I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. Thank you, Tom. Most experts say it is likely that springtime will be the time frame before the general public will have access to these vaccines. Meantime, the United States just passed 16,751,000 coronavirus cases and more than 300,000 people have died from this virus. This is an update from Johns Hopkins University's database. Here at home, we are expecting to get the new coronavirus case totals this afternoon from the past day. On Tuesday, the state reported more than 4,700 new cases with 183 new deaths, including 71 for a review of vital records. United Way of Southeast Michigan is helping Michigan residents find resources to avoid eviction during this pandemic. The eviction diversion program connects tenants who have been or have had trouble paying their rent because of the coronavirus with federal money that has been set aside to help them. So there is also a moratorium from the Federal Centers for Disease Control Agency on, on certain kinds of evictions. That moratorium banning eviction is set to expire at the end of the month. Right now we are facing a really unprecedented, uh, you know, crisis uh, in, in housing uh, because of the economic shutdown and because of the pandemic. Um, so there are some resources that have been made available uh, specifically because of the coronavirus epidemic. United Way says that calls into the 211 hotline are on the rise with families looking for help. The CDC moratorium banning evictions could be extended if the federal government acts. Meanwhile, as far as pandemic relief on the state level, Governor Whitmer is urging lawmakers to respond to her request for aid for both workers and businesses. She sent out a $100 million request to lawmakers back in November, and then she reiterated that request in another letter sent out on Monday. Leaders in Michigan's House and Senate tell us that they are working on a relief bill. On the federal level, a months-long deadlock on that second COVID relief bill may soon be over. And just in, according to CNN, the next stimulus bill with will include stimulus checks. Meantime, top congressional leaders on both sides say that they are getting close to a deal. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer echoed that sentiment. Key sticking points have been aid for the states and local governments wanted by Democrats and a liability shield wanted by Republicans that would protect businesses from being sued if customers or employees contract COVID. Both sides may have backed off on those demands so that they can concentrate on what they do agree on. That includes an extension of jobless benefits, small business loans, and money for vaccine distribution. No deal has been finalized yet, but an announcement could come before Congress recently for the holidays at the end of the week. Meantime, stocks are mixed today as traders consider lawmakers' final efforts to get that stimulus package through. You're looking live at the board, and today the Dow came under pressure after weaker than expected November retail sales, and the S&P 500 and NASDAQ are higher today. Meantime, the pandemic is also taking a grip on holiday gift giving. More people are buying and mailing their gifts online, and many families and friends are not gathering to give gifts in person. So this has created that huge nightmare for shipping. And as Stephanie Goss reports, the post office is warning about long delays. Everyone expects long lines at the post office this time of year, but this year it's even worse. People are staying home instead of gathering with families. So all those gifts that arrived in the trunks of cars, well, now they're being shipped. Post Office General is calling this season historic. He says that the post office has added 50,000 seasonal workers. Part of that is to make up for a shortage of workers who are calling in sick with COVID. On top of that, he tells his workers in a seasonal message this year, that their competitors, UPS, FedEx, that their expectations are even higher than what they plan for, and that surplus could end up in the U.S. postal system. UPS and FedEx tell NBC News that they will be able to ship what they plan to ship with retailers, but all this excess surplus is maxing out the system. Everyone can expect delays. On top of, what, of that, you have this enormous storm that's barreling down on the East Coast today, and you have those shipments of vaccines that understandably get priority. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, New York.
Absolutely, Stephanie, thank you. Also making headlines this noon, the transition of presidential power continues. President-elect Joe Biden is expected to nominate former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm as Energy Secretary. Granholm is the third woman selected for Joe Biden's cabinet, joining Janet Yellen and Marsha Fudge. New at noon. An eight-year-old boy is shot and killed after a gun accidentally goes off in his own home what we've learned about what happens.